Welcome and good morning. I'm Julie Thompson, Executive Director of PAC TV, and today we're going to do our final COVID 19 update for the town of Kingston for the month of June. Um, and today we're lucky to have Josh Warren, who of course is the chair of the um, Board of Selectmen in Kingston, and Kathy Lenatra, who is the state representative. Um, Josh, you want to just start and uh, introduce Miss Kathy and see what we're going to talk about today? Sure, sure. Uh, Julie, once again, uh, thank you so much for, for supporting uh, these updates throughout the pandemic. Uh, as you stated, this will be our last uh, update for the summer. Um, but as we shared last week, uh, we'll certainly uh, hop back on and, and start doing this again if there uh, is a reason to. If we see a change in the numbers, a change in the um, current direction that things seem to be trending, uh, or if there's any big news to report uh, based on the guidance that we're receiving from the Commonwealth and from our state rep, Kathy Lenatra, um, and anything local that, that really necessitates an additional update. Uh, very grateful that Kathy could join us today as well. I know she's got a very busy schedule and she's had to do a hearing right after this. So I'll jump right into it. Yesterday afternoon, the Massachusetts Department of Public Health announced that there were 8,625 confirmed and probable cases of COVID-19 in Plymouth County. Uh, numbers continue to trend in the right direction here in Plymouth County and across the Commonwealth. Over the last seven days, we actually saw uh, in Plymouth County an average of only 10 new confirmed and probable cases of COVID-19 each day. So again, you know, this is down significantly from where we were about a month ago when those uh, daily averages were upwards of, of, you know, they were measured in the hundreds. Um, as of yesterday afternoon, the town of Kingston's total number of confirmed positive cases remained at 129. Uh, that number has maintained for the last 10 days. So we've, we've seen things stabilize a bit here in Kingston. Uh, and, and as I shared last Friday, uh, the, of the town's total number, 64 are from one facility. So uh, with that quick update, Julie, I'll turn it over to you. And um, I think you may ask some questions for our state rep, Kathy Lenatra. Okay, I do. And you're getting a little wonky there in your bandwidth. And that happens. Um, Kathy, you have a bunch of things you want to talk to us about. What would you like to start with? Oh, hi, Julie, and hi. thanks for having me this morning, Josh. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, and again, I would like to just echo a thanks to PAC TV and Julie and the staff. They have been amazing through this pandemic, keeping everyone informed. I mean, all towns throughout the South Shore. Um, I feel quite at home here. So thank you again for that. But a few things I want to discuss. I know everyone's concerned about going back to school, myself included, with two children in the school system. So DESE has come out with uh, three possible scenarios and they would like all school districts to send in a plan for these three possible scenarios. And those are full in-school learning, which would be wonderful with safety precautions, uh, a hybrid, so in and out of school, so it would be half remote, half in school. One of the ways that they were looking at that throughout the district is they would split the groups in half one half would be in school that week, the other half would be home learning remotely, and then it would swap off. And the other is all remote learning, which personally as a mother, I'm hoping not. You know how um, involved I am with mental health and, and worried about the mental health of our young people. I really think they need to go back to school at some point, hopefully if it's we safe and we'll all go back. Um, but those are the three scenarios that could happen. We do not have, we will not know till closer to, but Desi has come out with those. Um, and you can find that on mass.gov what those guidelines are in more depth. Um, I also wanted to mention a good thing about schools. We voted on a supplemental budget on Wednesday and I was um, lucky enough and worked really hard to secure some funds for the Silver Lake Regional School System. So this was COVID related funds. I secured 120,000 for remote learning upgrades and so 26,000 for personal protective equipment for our nurses, our nurses in the school. Um, these were figures that I had received from the school committee. So that's why those amounts, 26 sounds a little strange, but I received those amounts from the school committee and they were gonna request those amounts. So we are fortunate enough to have that. The only way we wouldn't get it is if the governor vetoed that, which I don't see happening. So I'm very pleased about that. Uh, another thing, tax-free holiday, a little good news. I like good news. Tax-free holiday this year will be August 29th and 30th, and that is tax-free up to $2,500. Again, that will be August 29th and 30th. 
And then another good thing, on Wednesday, we also voted, um, we have the supplemental budget, but in that, we had a unanimous yes vote to make Juneteenth, Juneteenth a state holiday. So that was a unanimous vote, and that was a great thing on Wednesday. We were all very pleased to vote that in. Uh, that will now go to the Senate, and hopefully that will move right along, and we'll have that. Uh, going back to the schools, with those three scenarios that we could have, they have also making more funding available for the schools. So the federal um, coronavirus relief fund is allocating $200 million to the schools. And that can be up to $225 per student for costs incurred during, during COVID, kind of like the funds that we secured already. This would be additional funds because I know everyone's concerned about the school budget, myself as well. I work very closely with the Mass Teachers Association. I have another meeting scheduled with them and we'll discuss that again. Uh, let me see what I'm missing. I, I think that is, on the school. yeah, do you have a question? I have a couple on the schools. Let's say that we, we get the, the, the one that everybody wants, I think, is that it's full time in school for the, for the yeah. kids and it's great for the adults, especially the adults who work. Um, if, if they have to have um, a smaller size classrooms or the, the kids have to be, I think, three feet away instead of six feet away is the, is the, um, the language correct. I'm using. So they have changed that guideline to three feet away, okay. which is definitely more doable. Would, would you agree? Oh, um, without a than doubt. Six feet away. They still are talking. Um, I haven't read anything today. And you know this as well as I do, Julie, that things change daily twice a day yeah right right by things being twice a day but the last i read they would like them to have their meals in the classroom yes yeah and I not at the cafeteria too. i have not seen that change yet um i mean it's going to be a different world yeah and masks Ultimately, right the kids over what is it nine years old sec over nine years old yeah. so i thought it was second grade but it could be nine because sec second grade is seven okay. years old so um well, but I they think, do need to i would think the other. kids would be thrilled to wear masks if they can be with their with their friends you, you I agree. think, right? I agree. Now, yeah. the, the money that, that is secured or that you're talking about, the 225 supplemental um, per, per student, mm -hmm. it, it, can that be put in the whole overall budget to help um, mitigate having to lay off teachers and staff? It's, hmm, that's a good question that I really don't want to answer without knowing okay. exactly the answer. I mean, I could give one, but it may not be okay, right. Okay, I know all, so all the schools are, are very concerned with having to lay off staff. Very concerned. I mean, and we won't know what we're going to, we don't know yet what we're going to be reimbursed from the CARES Act for okay. that. Um, we wait on that daily. And yep. we still don't have a budget at the state house. We voted a one twelfth budget on Monday. Um, so it's, we don't have the numbers for the school, which makes it so challenging for the schools to come up with their budget and the towns to come up with their budget. Yeah. Um, but where we delayed the filing of taxes from April 15th to July 15th, we don't have any revenue. So we're waiting for that revenue to come in. Like ultimately we need that revenue to have a budget. Right. So, um, ways and means the chair of ways and means. And we're back. So do you remember where you were <laughs> before you were rudely interrupted by this? Oh, geez, I went on and on and on. Oh, you didn't even know when you went off. <laughs> no, I didn't even know when I went off. <laughs> okay, we were, talk we were talking about... Very informative, Kathy. I, I got to hear all of it, and uh, it was Well, great. you were talking about we need the money um, from taxes and the revenue to be able to do our budget. Correct. That's, that's the last thing I heard before you froze. Okay, so that's the last thing. So we are waiting for that. July 15th was the new tax filing date. We're waiting for that revenue. And the chair of Ways and Means, Aaron Michalowicz, will um, come together with, with a budget. Okay, perfect. That and we'll start looking at to help the towns and the schools. Excellent. And all the schools in all our towns are, are in the same yeah. boat. Question on, everyone's in the same boat. Question on Juneteenth. Um, as a national, this is a state holiday because if, if it goes through the Senate, it's going to be a state holiday. Yes. Is that in yes. addition to all the other holidays we have, or is that replacing another holiday? It's not replacing okay. at this point. It's in addition to. Mm hmm. Okay. Josh, did you have any questions for Kathleen before she's got to go off on her four hour or five hour <laughs> meeting today? 
I, I don't, but Kathy, again, thank you for all your work at the uh, at the State House. Thank you for for joining us uh, throughout this pandemic to to speak with residents on PAC TV. And um, I, I really appreciate it. So uh, good luck with your your multi hour uh, hearing. And, thank you. Um, we'll thank talk you. Soon. All right, my and, pleasure. And Thanks, Kathleen, guys. and Kathleen, yeah. thank you so much. You hosted a number of uh, mental health forums that w have gotten a ton of views. They're really, yeah. really helpful. Um, and at any time, if you want to come back on and have another one for any reason whatsoever, we would love to have you back. Uh, another forum from from you as a state rep. Thank you, Julie. I think we'll have to address that again. Yeah. Um, once things when yeah. the children go back to school, I yeah. think that's something else we should maybe go back and address. Yeah. But. I really appreciate you letting me host those. It was such a great experience for me. I learned so much. We had so many professionals on yeah. uh, that I've become very friendly with and have learned so much since we've done those. And so many people have reached out that it really helped. So thank you. And it really did help. And we really needed that at the time. Mm -hmm. And now I think we need it again to get rid of some of the anger that's out there. People are angry that they yes. can't go on with their lives now. Um, mm -hmm. And it's it's... It's getting a little toxic. Um, so we might need you back <laughs> sooner okay. rather than later <laughs> for thank our anger you. issues. All right. Thank you again for joining us. And we'll let you go. Oh, my pleasure. Everyone okay. have a good weekend. You too. You too, Kathy. All right. Bye. So, Josh, we have a lot of yes. King Kingston news to talk about. We have an election yeah, so tomorrow. Go we ahead. have an election tomorrow. Um, you know, I, I think at this point we've, we've probably talked about this for the last several uh, COVID-19 updates, but it's certainly worth repeating. Uh, annual town elections and recall elections will be held tomorrow, Saturday, June 27th. Um, the polling hours are from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. And as was the case with the special state Senate election that we had uh, not long ago, Voting will not be available at the townhouse, and all residents who uh, who wish to vote in person on the day of are uh, going to be able to cast their ballots at the Kingston Elementary School. So again, the only polling location for tomorrow will be the Kingston Elementary School, and that will be open from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Okay. Have you gotten any indication um, from your, your clerk how many people actually sent in their ballots ahead of time? I, I forget what the numbers were for what had been submitted, but it, it measured in the hundreds in terms of what had been requested. So um, if you multiply that by two, I'm sure there's over a thousand ballots that uh, have been out in circulation because, of course, they're sending separate ballots for both the annual and the right. recall elections. Right, right. So, um, you know, I, I think the average was typically closer to 100 and, you know, the, the number of requested absentee ballots for, for tomorrow, um, you know, is head and shoulders above what it's been uh, historically. Excellent. That's good. A lot of people are taking advantage of that. Now, the town meeting is still set for uh, the 11th of, of, of uh, July, which is a Saturday. Um, we are going to have a new town moderator as of tomorrow. Is that correct? Yes. Um, so the, uh, just to, to address both of those, the, the, um, Town meeting is still scheduled for Saturday, July 11th at 9 o'clock a.m. at the Kingston Elementary School. Um, but as you said, we will have a new town moderator after uh, tomorrow. So it, that individual could choose to uh, postpone it for an, ad an additional 30 days. Um, you know, there's a number of factors that could impact uh, the location, the date. Uh, so, so right now it's really just, um, you know, planning for July 11th at 9 o'clock a.m., and uh, and waiting for for that to change. Okay. Well, we're all set up if that if that does occur at that at that place at that time. Um, and it's it's interesting too. I mean, we're seeing other communities that are holding theirs indoors. Um, I know Marshfield just had theirs this week. They were able to get through the entire warrant. So mm -hmm. um, I I think as more and more communities um, move to have their their town meetings, and there's certainly plenty that are opting to postpone as well. Um, I think there's probably, you know, a lot to be learned from those who are holding them. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd be, I'd be sure, uh, I, I'm sure that uh, Fire Chief Douglas, thanks all, uh, that Fire Chief Douglas would, um, you know, check in with those uh, representatives from those towns and, and see what can be learned in terms of how to have a safe and effective and efficient uh, town meeting. Right. I saw a um, picture over the weekend. I forget where it was, somewhere in Massachusetts. They had the town meeting outside, but people were in their vehicles. They were all on a big field, and they'd have to hold something out the window to vote. 
I thought that was, yeah, that was so unique. It's, it's really interesting. In, in talking to Fire Chief Douglas about this and, and uh, Town Council Jay Tallerman weeks, if not months ago, I know one of the big concerns with having it outdoors, of course, from Mark's perspective, uh, was heat. Sure. I'm sure, you know, doing it in a car, assuming that there is, you know, projection with the audio. Um, air conditioning would, would alleviate that if, uh, if you're able to, you know, idle your car and have the AC going. Um, that said, one of the other issues is, is making sure that the meeting is accessible to anybody who may be hearing impaired. And um, I know one of the challenges that we were running into was how to have a stenographer outside in the sun on a field right. and actually being able to project uh, what was being said so that anybody who relies on the stenographer uh, could read the text. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm sure Fire Chief Douglas, the incoming moderator, um, will will look to these other communities mm -hmm. regardless of whether or not uh, Kingston's town meeting is indoors or outdoors because, you know, there's there's no sense in reinventing the wheel that no, we can always right. add a couple of additional yep. spokes and, you know, make it a little bit better. Sure. Learn from, from what everyone else has already done. Absolutely. Correct. Question about the restaurants now being able to um, seat people inside. How has that gone yes. so far? So as far as I know, uh, all indications from our health agent are that things are going well. I know, um, at least with the outdoor seating, there was a little bit more... Um, hoops to jump through and, and there was some licensure uh, challenges or, or rather steps that needed to be followed by the uh, proprietors. Um, but all indications are with reopening for indoor seating, things are going well. I know uh, Arthur was going to do some uh, visits this week just to see how, uh, how places were doing. Um, I'm thrilled about it. I, I went out to eat for the first time uh, since late February, early March. Uh, this past Friday, and it was great. It was it was nice not only to go out and have a meal, but to see other people. And, and again, this was last Friday, so we were still relying on the outdoor seating. But it was just so nice to see people outside, um, you know, eating a meal, spending time with family, mm -hmm. and uh, and and for the first time in a long time, things started to feel like they were getting back to normal. Yeah. Um, so I, I certainly hope as as the Commonwealth continues to. Uh, lift restrictions and, and allow residents and businesses uh, to get back to, to some of the things that we used to enjoy. We'll see more and more of it. Right. And also, um, this Monday, um, nail salons opened, uh, personal training could, could occur. Uh, have you heard any, any feedback on all those, those ancillary businesses that were able to open as of Monday? I have not. Um, again, just news from the health department is uh, they, they fielded some phone calls earlier this week and we're able to direct uh, business owners to the answers. So I know there were a Great. lot of folks who were wondering uh, whether or not their business qualified uh, for reopening. There were a lot of folks who were wondering where they could go on the, the mass.gov website to figure out exactly what boxes they needed to check before right. they could open the doors. And Arthur and Kathy, who are our uh, staff members in the health office, have just been tremendous throughout this. Um, and, and you know, sometimes it's as simple as pointing a business owner in the right direction. And sometimes it's a little bit more complicated and there is, you know, a little bit of uh, additional work that needs to be done. But I know earlier this week, uh, a lot of the questions were fairly straightforward and mm -hmm. it was really just correcting folks to the answers that the Commonwealth had provided. Okay, great. Now, we're coming up on a, a beautiful weekend and then, of course, the 4th of July next week. So what's going to happen in Kingston with the beaches and everything else? Sure. So I'm, I'm glad you asked that because we do have some reopening updates specific to uh, town-owned buildings and properties. I'll start with Gray's Beach. Um, the reopening task force uh, just the other day gave them the go-ahead to start selling beach stickers to out-of-town residents. Um, I think the rationale there was if, if our mall is open, if restaurants are open, and we have folks that are coming in uh, from all over to do business, um, you know, the, the beaches uh, and, you know, the Boneyard as well, which I'll, I'll mention next, um, you know, those were only logical places to open up to out-of-town residents who were coming here anyway to spend money, to do business. Um, so Gray's Beach will be uh, open to non-residents effective Monday the 29th. Those stickers will be on sale at the Reed Building. And just in case there are any non-residents watching, those stickers are $30. Uh, for residents, those stickers are $15. And again, they'll be on sale uh, at the Reed Building. I know there's more information on the rec department's website and on their Facebook pages regarding the hours um, and forms of payment. But, uh, you know, certainly with, uh, with, with warm weather upon us, it looks like we might have a, a wet weekend and early start to next week. Uh, but with the warm weather upon us, I'm sure they're going to see um, in, an influx of sticker sales and folks looking to, uh, to spend some time at Gray's Beach. 
Uh, just to jump back to the Boneyard, the reopening task force uh, also gave them the green light to start selling um, uh, park access licenses uh, to out-of-town residents and to welcome back out-of-town uh, users. So uh, the, the same rules apply that, that were always in place. Uh, anybody using a dog park does need to have their park access license visible at all times. Uh, 2019 access licenses are still valid. And if anybody doesn't have a park access license um, and they would like to get one, uh, they're, they're asked to call the town clerk's office at 781-585-0502 uh, to make arrangements to, to purchase a park access license. But again, uh, the Boneyard and Grays Beach are now uh, open to non-residents and that uh, was conversations uh, that had happened with Fire Chief Douglas and other members of the reopening task force. Um, another exciting update, the Council on Aging is still closed to the public. However, on Wednesday, they resumed their AARP tax preparation services for seniors. Um, that's a program that's paid for by a grant. And at this point in time, AARP isn't able to sign any new residents up for the program. Uh, but they are in a position where they can fulfill commitments that they had made prior to the Council on Aging closing in March to the public. So on their first day, they assisted 14 seniors in processing their returns. They have 20 more scheduled for this coming week, and they'll be on site, um, I believe it's Monday, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays going forward to help work through the backlog uh, of, of seniors who, again, had previously signed up for tax preparation support um, and weren't able to make those appointments due to the, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. Anybody who has questions about the AARP tax prep program uh, can call the Council on Aging. The number there is 781-585-0511. And um, I, I think that might be about it for reopening updates. One other one, I'm sorry, only because um, transfer station stickers, uh, new transfer station stickers will be uh, needed for the, the transfer station. Those are on sale at the highway barn. Uh, they're open Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. And I think we've talked about this previously uh, during COVID-19 updates. But if you go to the Highway Barn to pick up your transfer station sticker, um, there's some really great signage out front that tells you, um, you know, the amount that you'll have to make a checkout for, who to make it out to. Um, there's indications for, for residents or, or rather instructions for residents to socially distance but you can make your transaction without actually going into the building. They now have a service window that's outside facing the parking lot. Um, there's an awning above it. So if it's drizzling, if it's raining, um, you can be dry while you uh, purchase your, your uh, transfer station sticker. But it seems to be a really effective setup. I, brought, I bought mine last Friday, I believe. And um, you know there was a short line of folks waiting outside and, and uh, the staff there moved us right through the line pretty quickly. Great. Do you have um, any recreation programs in the summer that are now opening for, for kids to join into? Yes, and I'd, I'd direct any residents who are interested in um, rec department programs to uh, either call the rec department, and I can pull that number up, or go uh, visit them online. Um, I, when I, I last looked, there were still um, spots available for the summer programming. And um, I think maybe two COVID-19 updates ago, we had Sue Woodworth on, who gave an overview of what some of those changes in programming would be. Sure. Um, so if, if anybody does have questions um, regarding the programming, certainly uh, give a call over to the Recreation Department. I'm looking for that number right now. Um, but uh, Everything's on your website. Everything correct. is on your website. It's yeah, just, so I love your website. It's so easy to navigate. Yes. The, sorry, the number there, uh, while I have it up, is 781-585-0533. Um, but again, uh, we had Sue Woodworth on uh, a few episodes ago, and all of the COVID-19 updates are archived on the, the town of Kingston's website. So if you go to www.kingstonmass.org and you navigate over to the COVID-19 page, which there's a big banner at the top, you can just click on that. At the bottom of the page, there is a hyperlink that says archived COVID-19 videos. And um, it, it wasn't the, the June 19th, but it may have been uh, June 5th. Okay. Uh, it was fairly recently. Yeah. And Sue does give a great overview of exactly what residents can expect, what campers can expect, and how programming will differ this year, this year in light of uh, COVID-19. Okay, great. Thank you. That's been wonderful. Um, clearly, Massachusetts is doing things correctly. Um, we're, we're one of six or seven states that are in the green now as far as where 
we're, we're showing positive trends instead of negative trends the way a lot of the other states are doing. So what we're doing is working. So I hope people can keep patient um, and follow the, the governor's directions and follow the directions of your, um, your leaders in your town. And Josh, any closing words today for our final COVID-19 update? Just, sure, just to echo what you said, um, you know, what we're doing in Massachusetts seems to be working. Um, I know the, the governor took a, a lot of criticism because of how uh, slowly things open. I know there was a lot of pushback from folks uh, that wanted to see things open quicker. Um, but if you look at the, the numbers and how they're trending across the country, um, we're certainly doing better than most. Um, I, I believe this week we had our, our largest uh, single day increase in COVID-19 cases in the United States. Um, that's certainly not reflective of what we're seeing here in the Commonwealth. So, um, you know, I just ask residents to, to continue to be patient, continue to wash your hands, uh, continue to cover your face when you're out in public, and um, continue to maintain social distancing. Because, again, uh, you don't have to look further than the, uh, the town of Kingston's um, updates that we still put out on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays on the town website. You don't have to look further than mass.gov uh, every afternoon at 4 o'clock to see the state's reports. Uh, what we're doing here in Massachusetts is currently working. Uh, what we've done for the last several months has clearly worked. And um, if, if we all just keep doing what we've been doing, I, I, I hope that um, things continue to trend in the right direction. Excellent. Me too. Okay. Here's hoping. So uh, thank you so much. That was Josh Warren um, from Kingston. So we uh, have done this for the last time on 626. You can see the date up there. We've always date stamped all these forums that we've had with Josh over the past three and a half months. If you want to watch them again, go to packtv.org slash Kingston. You can see everything we've ever done on these uh, forums. So this is Julie Thompson for Pack TV saying, please be careful, social distance, wear your mask, wash your hands, and keep the faith. Good day. <laughs>